There are a number of ways to create roof objects in Vectorworks, but the first one we'll start with is the actual roof object. Uh, the roof object is almost always created either from a polygon, either a shape like a rectangle drawn out, or exterior walls. You normally would select all of your exterior wall objects and then use AEC Create Roof. Depending on which workspace you're in, in Architect and Designer, I believe it will say AEC. If you're in Landmark, I believe you'll still have this, but it'll be under the Landmark menu. And here, we'll have our default settings. Now, thickness is very easy to see. In the Eve profile, you can change this right away, and you'll see that this changes directly, so you have control over this right away. This is very obvious how this functions. This is a little more, this takes a little more explaining you're going to select the value that you want to be calculated automatically. You're not going to select what you want to change. So for instance, if I knew I wanted this roof pitch to be 30 degrees, I would choose any of these other values so that I can set this to 30 degrees and then set the other two. This value that I click is going to be set automatically based on the other two values, or on the other three values, excuse me. Now, layer here is a little more important. Currently, I only have one design layer in this document. It just houses these walls. Almost always, you will want a new separate layer, Design Layer 2. We're going to edit those properties after creation. And we want to make sure that that layer is stacked on top of the next object. So this is a stacking of 1, and our other layer is a stacking of 0. So this will be stacked on top of it. If you have your story or level system set up, you would choose the roof here. However, we do want to give this an elevation. We want to make this 2 meters off of the ground plane. And we will go ahead and leave that alone and click OK. Click OK and create our roof. Now if we switch to a 3D view here, you'll see the 2D representation. I've just done it in gray so it's a little easier to see. You can see here that it's a little too tall. This is because the layer elevation was set too high. I set it to 2 meters. It should looks like it should be a bit about 1. So we'll go to Tools and Organization. We'll edit the height here. I'll choose to edit and we'll set that elevation. We'll make that half a meter instead. Click OK and you'll see the roof drop back down on top of the walls. I showed you that because that's one of the most common things that you'll notice when you first go to make these. And of course you can't see the fill of these because of the layer uh, options in the file. We can just go to view layer options. Currently it's graying other layers that aren't active. We'll just use show snap modify so we can now see both the layers. Now when you select the roof, you'll see these three that look like selection handles but they're a little different. These are face controls. So we'll go back to top plan view. They'll, they'll be visible in any view, however. You, you don't click and drag on these, you just click them once. And now you're editing the roof settings for this particular edge. So this roof, since the rectangle just has four edges, if I had done a hexagon, I would have six. It's just a number of them, but you can click them and edit them individually. So if we set this to gable, it'll look a little different in top plan. You can probably guess what's happened in 3D. It's made this a gable end on this roof. Now it's rare that you would have one gable end, so this is the other very common roof type. It's just a gabled roof, so it's just gabled on both sides, very simple. Now the other configuration is shed roof. You would also set this one to gable as well, and that would create your shed roof that just went low on one end and high to the other end. However, the next thing I want to talk about is show walls. So these two ends, do you see how they're in solid gray? They're not in the brick? We'll go ahead and uncheck this, and now you can see holes here where it's no longer using the, the wall, it's no longer drawing those gray wall ends. What normally you want to do to get this roof to fit now is you'll select this wall, you go AEC, fit walls to objects. We're going to train, constrain the top of the walls to the layer above. And that's another reason we made it on the layer above this one, because we want to be able to constrain to this roof. We'll click OK, and this will fit all the way up into this object. So this wall will now have a peak right in the middle of this. If we were to delete this wall, you can see we actually have a peak on that wall there. You can see that undo this, put the roof back, and we can do the same to the other end. Now this is a very simple configuration, but this is pretty much what you would use to fit it to, and again we're just going to do the top, to fit to any sort of roof geometry you had that was set up this way. This is the easiest way to do it, so your roof just goes all the way up on both sides. Now this was a very simple example, however, we can also go over to a very complicated wall network, and we can roof this as well. And you see we have a few curved walls in here. We'll show you what it actually does when you try to do a curved wall. AEC, create roof. We'll leave all these settings. Click OK. Let it run. There we are. 
Then you can see what it's done is it's made individual flat surfaces. You can see how many handles we have to select it. Each of these edges can be controlled by clicking one of these handles. So if we wanted this one to be a gable end, we could click that and easily make this a gable end wall. The roof will recalculate and give us a nice straight gable end there. We can do that for any number of these. There we go. Now you see because this roof is, now this roof is immensely complex just to show that you can basically make whatever shape you need to. The trick is when you have roof objects like this, if you ever get an error message, what it is is most likely that the bearing inset is too high or that the overhang is not possible. If these two were even closer, for instance, the overhangs might cross. You're not able to do that when you create a roof. So if you ever try to make a complicated roof shape and it doesn't seem to work for you, check things like that. That's generally what you'll want to do to get this right. Now, there are also roof faces, which we can get by ungrouping a roof like this. So if I go back to my original sample roof, run that in OpenGL. If I ungroup this roof, you'll ask if you're sure you want to ungroup high-level objects. You can say yes. You'll have individual roof faces now. And I can select these and work with them individually. We'll cover roof faces in another video. There's a few reasons you would want roof faces separate from a roof object as well as using slabs for roof objects because there's a number of reasons, especially considering the slab drainage, so that you would use a slab object for your roof instead of a roof object. But again, we'll cover that in another video.